All right, what's going on, everybody? It is Monday night, and it is time for another episode of Recovery Revolution Live. I'm Brett. I'm one of the hosts of the show, and I'm so excited to have you guys here with us tonight. I also host another podcast called Recovery Survey. Uh, I release new episodes every Wednesday. This week, I have an episode that's going to be about eating disorders and food addiction, so be sure to check that out. It's going to be a great episode. I'm also joined tonight by the lovely Ashley Grimes. Hey, Ashley. Hey, happy Monday. Happy Monday. For those of you guys that don't know Ashley, she was on here last week, and she is the NAMI Florida president. She is an advocate for recovery-friendly workplaces, recovery-oriented systems of care, trauma-informed criminal justice systems, recovery schools, peer support services, um, Man, the list goes on and on. So glad to have you on tonight with us again, Ashley. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. And without further ado, we have tonight's guest. He goes by the name of Carl, and he is the host of the Drunk and Warm podcast. He recently celebrated four years clean back on the 8th of December, and he works as a, a clinical supervisor at a rehab in florida welcome to the show carl hi thank you very much i'm very happy to be here and take the time to talk some recovery tonight so it's gonna be a lot of fun absolutely man glad to have you on thank you very much for inviting me all right so um yeah so brett uh, i really appreciate you um asking me to come on and you know i did something with your um podcast and um i just wanted to yeah i love playing a little bit of music coming in i saw the music that we had going in and also that video um stream of all the people that are celebrating recovery um but you know what i gotta do it again brother <laughs> i gotta play a little bit of music and tonight's going to be really special because we're going to be talking about recovery. We're going to be celebrating birthdays tonight. And that really gets me going because that's what recovery is all about. It's about bringing us together, showing us that we can recover, showing the all people right, guys, out there that are struggling. And, and <laughs> mine had a little bit. I am the creator of this podcast. Uh-oh. And you are listening. So, again, we're, we're going to be talking about recovery tonight. And, and I'm so excited because... Recovery literally has taken me to a place in my life where I didn't think it was possible for me to go. I was stuck in an addiction for 17 years and, you know, and I, I basically summed my life up like, you know, this is going to be it. And this is going to be what my life will consist of. And I, I didn't think that the life that I have today was even possible four and a half years ago let alone four years ago, or definitely not five years ago. So really grateful to, to have outlets like this, to have platforms like this, to really talk about recovery and to talk about mental health, to talk about addiction, and to bring awareness to all those important things. So thank you very much for having me on, man. Man, so excited to have you on. And I would love if you wouldn't mind kind of sharing your story with everybody that's on the live stream that may not know who you are or isn't familiar with, with you. Yeah, sure. So, um, uh, you know, guys, my name is Carl. I'm an addict. Um, I just celebrated uh, four years on December the 8th of this year. And, you know, my my story is, I don't really think that my story is too uncommon. I mean, I, I work in the recovery field. Like Brett said, I'm a clinical supervisor. Um, and I work in uh, California over in Vallejo. And for me to be able to work with people that are coming in off of the streets that are, you know, new to the idea that they could get sober is so rewarding. And unfortunately, there are a lot of statistics out there that show that there's a really high relapse rate. So that's why it's important to have platforms like this and to talk about recovery. Um, when I got sober, I started listening to podcasts. And that was something that really struck me as some, some type of message, right? I was going to meetings and I had a sponsor and I still have a sponsor, the same sponsor. But for me, the podcasts were really a way to kind of broaden my horizons as far as 
different topics that could be brought into the recovery community and different problems that the recovery community is having. And so that's why I really love podcasts. And that's why I wanted to start my own podcast, the Drunken Worm Podcast. And so uh, with, with starting that podcast and coming into recovery and stuff, I really wanted to take kind of a different approach. So with my podcast, we really focus on two aspects. I focus on the recovery aspect of the recovering addict, but I also focus on the industry aspect. So I interview people that are in the industry. Um, you know, we're interviewing uh, this coming up. We have uh, one of the uh, founders of the um, ASAM, which is the American Society of Addiction Medicine, which is one of our tools that we use to, um, you know, assess people for a level of care and to kind of see where they're at. So I really like the idea to kind of integrate both sides so that professionals can get something out of it, but also the recovering addict. And a lot of times those bridges kind of come together and they cross a little bit too. So that's, that's why it's so much fun to come on here and, and do these different types of things. And this is my first uh, live broadcast. So I'm really grateful because I've wanted to do one of these and Brett asked me and, and I, I jumped on it. I was like, Oh heck yeah, let's do that. So, um, Oh, and I see the C sober mode hoodie there. You know, Brett, I just bought two of those t-shirts. Um, one, one for myself and one for my, uh, my partner. Nice. And, um, yeah, he, so he's, he's really into the whole recovery aspect, but he's a normie. So, you know, but, um, <laughs> but we, we have a lot of fun and everything. So, um, yeah. So, you know, just a little bit of my story. So yeah, man, um, I'll, I'll, I'll tell more of my story as we kind of go, go through the evening here and, and everything, but it looks like we have a lot of people in the room right now, brother. Yeah, absolutely, man. Glad, glad everybody's here watching the yeah. broadcast. If you guys have any questions or comments, be sure to put those in the comments because we can see those and we can interact with you guys. So be sure to, to comment. Yeah. Yeah. So really grateful to have all you guys here and taking the time to, to tune into us and, and listen to what we have to say. <laughs> so, and Ashley, how are you doing today? How, how are you doing this evening? I'm good. Yeah. We're being brave here, being live and on video and we can't mess up or if we do, it, I guess it doesn't matter. It's like yeah. life, right? Exactly. Exactly. So, yeah. So, so Ashley, you work for now, NAMI. I can never pronounce it right. <laughs> uh, I'm the, the NAMI Florida president, so it's a volunteer position. Um, I actually work for a commercial construction company. Okay. Yeah, very cool. Very cool. And I'm, I'm a person in long-term recovery, too, and, and a certified peer recovery specialist. So. Very nice. Very nice. So. So yeah, Brett. So Brett, tell us, man. I'm I'm new to this. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll, <laughs> if, if you let me talk the whole time, I'm going to take the whole show over, and this is going to be, um, I'll, I'll host the show. But but man, I, I I love talking to you, Brett and I. We talk all the time, and um, you know, I I called him the other day coming back from Monterey, which is uh, down towards the middle of California. Beautiful weather down there. I mean, it was like early December, and it was seventy four degrees down there and it's I, it was just amazing um but but brett's actually turned into a pretty good friend of mine and, and we talk quite a bit and um i love I, dude i love seeing pictures of the kids pictures of your family beautiful family you have man oh i, I appreciate that man yeah it's it's one of the uh, i guess i could say that's one of the benefits of recovery man i never thought i would be married or or have a kid or any of those things man like my entire life revolved around getting high and staying high and doing whatever I had to do to, to stay that way. So yeah, man, it's definitely a, a blessing and it's something that I never thought was possible. It was never really something that I wanted. Um, but yeah, man, it's, it's, it's crazy, man. Life is truly crazy. Yeah, it, it really is. And, um, we saw Chrissy out there, Chrissy love Monterey. Thank you for that. Um, beautiful out there. So for those of you that might be in California or thinking of visiting California, it's a great place to go and visit. I'm just throwing that out there. So that's that's awesome. my wife. <laughs> oh, is it really? <laughs> yeah. She's well, watching the Chrissy, street. Chrissy, you and Brett need to get out here. I'm telling you. <laughs> let's let's Wait. do a little vacay out here. Or you can come to Florida. Yeah, let's let's cool. battle it out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Florida. Yeah, we're working on. I've I've just started tanning, so you know I I'll I'll by the time I get out there I'll look like a native. There you go. <laughs> 
<laughs> I don't have any hope. So I was I was born in Daytona, but okay, can't tell. Yeah, Florida's beautiful out there. They have good golf out there too. I love golf. <laughs> I can't do it. It's too frustrating. I don't have the patience. Yeah, that's what that's what my partner Ryan says. He's like, I don't know how you play golf. It's so frustrating. I don't even get it. Like, you just hit a ball. I'm like, uh, well, it's a little more than that, but yeah, essentially. <laughs> I'm even bad at putt putt. <laughs> <laughs> but at least putt putt, you get to like go through like windmills and under dinosaur legs and you know, <laughs> you know all that stuff. If I have to go through a windmill on a golf course, I think I'm playing the wrong course. <laughs> So, yeah. yeah, I can't hit it straight, let alone under a windmill and through the jungle and across the pond. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Good times. See, this is what this is what recovery is all about is we get to talk about things that we enjoy, talk about things that frustrate us and um, be able to remember them. You know, the following day, we'll actually remember this conversation. And that's amazing to me. So. Absolutely. Man. <clears throat> Go ahead, Ashley. I was going to say we have the same year. Like, so if you just celebrated four years and you're 2017 too, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I am. Yeah. Okay. You also? Mm -hmm. oh, May. May. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, so what was your rock bottom there? What, what brought you into recovery? Um, there was a couple of things. Um, my best friend used my prescription to commit suicide. Wow. And I, didn't want to continue on. I felt so guilty. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's, that's very sorry for your loss on that one. Uh, I've had a few friends uh, commit suicide um, and that's, it's always really hard, right? You know, to, to, to talk about, to talk about it, but also to think about what we as another person on the other end of that, who's affected by it, you know, how do we cope and what do we do so that we don't go back out and use drugs or we don't have to go back out and drink? You know, what 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 um, community do we have right now where we can go and say, hey, I'm struggling and I need help. And that's the recovery community for sure. Yep. And I think we should teach our kids how to be able to ask for help for anything. It's something we teach everyone. They have to be so strong and asking for help is weak. And it's exactly the opposite. Asking for help is the strongest thing you could ever do. Yeah. 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 It's, uh, you know, I mean, it's, it's really hard. And I did a, um, an episode with um, Dr. Yusuf. It was my second episode that I did on the Drunken Worm podcast. And it was Dr. Yusuf, why doesn't anybody hear me? And we talked about how to help somebody in the time of crisis and how to help somebody in, in their time of need and what we can do as a support person for that. And, you know, a lot of times just being able to listen to them and listening to them without judgment and, uh, you know, offering that help and support if they need it is, is so important. But I've found that a lot of times I've had a lot of clients in crisis and, um, some with suicidal ideation and, and just for them to talk about it with me and to kind of sit down and, and we, and we talk about the severity of it and, you know, do they have a plan or, you know, uh, kind of what, how they're feeling at that time for a lot of them, just being able to talk to somebody and to understand that what they're going through is normal. Uh, it's scary. And, you know, we're, we're there to support them, um, can often mean, you know, how one person might, might sway one way or another. So, yeah. And sometimes people just need to be able to talk and they figure it out themselves. They figure out what they want, but they just have to have somebody that's empathetic in there. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So, so Brett's over there pushing buttons. I see that he's am, he's am. posting hoodies and stuff and yeah and everything. The uh, the uh, what, what is it? The sober um sober mode. mode. Yeah. yeah. Let me. Dude, those are no. I mean, let me switch to you so stuff. we can. I have a little Good bit job. of a lighter. I have a lighter background so you can actually see it on mine. Yeah. Yeah. Let me get out of the way. 
That's cool. Brett, is that a um, solid background behind you there? Um, no. Or is that one that you're able to um, take down and up? That It is a fake backdrop. It is... <laughs> It is uh it's yeah. made out of cloth. Okay. <laughs> it's made out of cloth. And um and you, you told me a little story about <laughs> you putting that up with Chris. <laughs> yeah, yeah. My my wife was not uh, a fan of me leaving the backdrop up all the time because right now I'm recording in our bedroom. <laughs> um we're in the process of trying to move to a, a larger home, but right now the recording studio is also the bedroom. Yeah. So I have this lovely cloth backdrop that it that I uh, that I put on a um, what do you call it a uh, like the roll down blinds. Mm, I fitted yeah. it on one of those so I can roll it up and down and <laughs> and hide it when I'm not recording. <laughs> <laughs> That's great, man. I know we were talking about that. I got to get a backdrop behind me because I I'm I like my my desk is half in my closet and it's half out of my closet. And what people see is like the chaos end of everything. But what I look at is actually a nice studio end. I have my sound panels up and, you know, my, my raised speakers on the desk. And it actually looks very presentable. But unfortunately, that's not where the camera's facing now, is it? So, <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's a work in progress, man. You know, I, I, I told myself, I actually think I want to rotate the whole studio so that it goes directly back to the closet. And I'm going to take everything out of the closet and then put a nice backdrop and paint it and stuff. So, yeah, that's one of my goals for 2022 is to have my own dedicated space, but we'll see what happens. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's awesome, man. So, you, Brett, you were talking about a little bit about um, stuff you have coming up on th your podcast. So, what's, what's coming up for you for 2022? Oh, man. That's a good question. I, <laughs> I, I'm not a really great planner. Uh, I feel like I kind of just fly by the seat of my pants. Um, I've recorded several episodes, um, but I don't, I don't have anything scheduled out. I don't, I don't know, man. I've thought about trying to do like holiday episodes or like special things like that. And I haven't, I haven't gotten to that point where I plan far enough out. Episode yeah. 100 is coming up, and I feel like I should probably do something special for episode 100, but I haven't figured out what to do for that. I've thought about maybe trying to do like a compilation of like greatest hits or something. I don't, I don't know what I'm going to do yet. I don't plan, I don't plan very well. Yeah. You could do, you could do like little like five minute snips of like, you know, I don't know your top, let's see, five minutes times 10 would be. Well, your episodes are pretty short too, right? You're you only do about thirty minute episodes. Yeah, yeah, they're about thirty minutes. Yeah, so you could do little snippets there. Ashley, you have any ideas for him? I was gonna say he could do Valentine's Day's coming up. He could do mm. dating and recovery, or the the yes. the good, the bad, the ugly. You know, yeah. like good stories, bad stories. Yeah, you can, I, I you didn't. Can... Yeah, I didn't do much dating and recovery. That's that's okay. It's not about you on the episode. It will be about True. others. So what you could do is you could actually, okay, we're going to build an episode for you right now. So um, what you can do on your profile is you can put out a survey and you could do a survey and you could do the whole episode on us based off of a survey. Survey. A, a recovery, like survey, a recovery survey. Yeah. Do build your <laughs> own. Build your own. And then if you put it out early enough, like, you know, maybe a month prior and you could do, dude, you could do a live recording. We could have a background with little hearts. Yeah, I, I think this is going to, this is going to go somewhere. If you have dating recovery, recovery dating stories, comment in the comment section and I'll get with you after the live broadcast. Yes. Yes. And, and I'll provide the music. for you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you could. Oh, that's awesome. Did you, did you wait a full year? Did you not wait a full year? What are the benefits of? waiting a year what are the benefits of not waiting a yeah. year yeah you know? exactly we could get interesting yeah it could exactly. yeah, be very interesting so so let's let's ask everyone that's in the room right now because this is actually a pretty uh pretty hot topic i think for anybody in recovery you know that you have your hardcore people that are like no you have to wait a year and then you have some other people who are like well what if i meet the right person and then you have, you know, the sponsors that stand you in front of a mirror like mine did and says, well, what do you have to offer somebody 
<laughs> mm. <laughs> you know, uh, nothing. <laughs> he said, well, then you're not dating yet, are you? And I said, no, sir. So, <laughs> yeah. So, so what, what do you guys think of the, um, the idea that, you know, dating within your first year of recovery could be dangerous for somebody. I don't want to use the word detrimental, but, you know, it could be a slippery slope for a lot of people if they start dating. Because for me, I, I didn't understand myself. And so mm-hmm. how could I understand somebody else and how I would interact with them and how my relationship with them is going to be? You know, I'm I'm still working. Well, back then I was still working the steps and I, I, I didn't even know how to have a relationship with myself, let alone with somebody else. So I would, I didn't even get a dog or a cat. Like I was afraid, like, you know, I was going to screw that up. And then I watched 28 days later and they're like, we'll just buy a plant. I bought a plant. The plant died. <laughs> I, was, I was devastated. It's like, Oh my gosh, I just killed this plant. <laughs> you poor little thing. So I've never bought another living plant. I've only bought like the fake ones now. I'm like, okay, that's good. I don't have to water you, but you look pretty. <laughs> yeah. I think for me, it was, you know, like jumping from one to another, as far as I, you know, using substances to numb, then you, you know, date someone and use that to hide your feelings. And it was kind of, I had to deal with my crap before. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Deal with our crap. I like that one. Um, You know, it's, but it really kind of sums it up in, in the terms of, you know, what is healthy to us? You know, where, where are we going in this world? And I've, I've seen a lot of people get into relationships in their first year of recovery. And more often than none, I have seen those relationships not work out. And from that, I have seen people go back out and use because they didn't know how to handle the feelings and the emotions and everything that kind of went along with that. So, you know, it's, it's, it's really a hard one to, um, to do. And, and I'm a sponsor now and I tell my sponsees, I say, you know, what, you, don't do it. Don't date your first year. I mean, I work a program of suggestion. I'm not there pounding books and, and telling them, oh, this is the only way that you have to do it because they need to learn on their own. I'm not there to work their recovery. I'm only there as a, a guide and a mentor to help them through the steps and through the process. But I always tell them, I say, you know what, don't do it. And I have one sponsee. Oh gosh, if he gets a hold of this, I won't name names, <laughs> but um, <laughs> um, I, I call it Dick Striction. I said, uh, you know what, you you two years, two. Wow. And, and um, th- there's reasons behind that, but you know, but really kind of, uh, kind of allowing them to focus on themselves. And I don't even think I was ready to date after I finished my first round of steps. And that was like two years into my recovery. Yeah. I'm a completely different person now than I was when I first started. So absolutely. Women have multiple personalities anyway, so they get like five (laughs) versions of me anyway, but they need the sixth. (laughs) Is Is it like that? Um, that, uh, what is it? Oh, what's the commercial? Um, the realtor dot now commercial where she like walks into the boardroom and like all of her different personalities are there and she's like, okay, strenuous me. What do you think about buying the house? And they're like, blah, blah, blah. And she's like, oh my gosh, you're too extreme. And <laughs> that, that's kind of how like it happens in my head too. And, and it, that commercial cracked me up. I'm like, oh my God, how did you know? Yeah. I don't think mine go that quickly, like cycle through it that quickly, but you know, they're definitely all there. Yeah. Have you named them? No, but I, I should. Yeah. That, that would be great. I you just get a, a t-shirt that says, hello, my name is with like a bunch of like, hello tags. <laughs> yeah. I'll just, I'll, one personality for each occupation and I'll just have like 10 occupations. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um, that's like, have you guys seen the, um, the Winnie the Pooh, uh, um, sketch where they take all the Winnie the Pooh characters and they put like mental health diagnosis behind each one of them and how each one of them actually fit into a, 
um, the DSM-5. And for those of you who aren't familiar with what that is, it's the Diagnostic Manual for uh, Mental Health Disorders. And they, they categorize each one of them with a mental health disorder. And then they, they explain why they have that. And you're like, oh, my God, that's so right. And I didn't even realize it. <laughs> Was it Eeyore that had anxiety? Or no, I don't think no. It was um, it was um, Piglet that had the anxiety. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, because he always carried the blanket. Eeyore was just chronically depressed, and Piglet had ADHD. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know how they got to that conclusion, but. <laughs> I could see the anger thing with you know Eeyore and anxiety because when you're anxious, you sometimes get mad and mean. Yeah, it's kind of. He's mean a little bit sometimes. Yeah. What, what did you say it was called? Um, I I don't. So look look it up um, online. It's if you look up Winnie the Pooh and um, just type in like mental disorders. Ah. Do you find it? <laughs> I think so. Oh, this is not the right thing. I'm on. I'm on the. The Wikipedia Winnie the Pooh page, that's not the right thing. No. no. <laughs> Fantastic that he has a Wikipedia page though. Every everything <laughs> has a everything has a has a page, man. Did did you know that with Wikipedia, that was like the one website that my professors in school said that you cannot you cannot get any information from here. And if you cite it in your paper, I will fail your paper. Um, cause I, I didn't know at the time until I got into school, but they're like, anybody can go in and alter the information and it's not checked for factual like content. Right. Right. And so I was like, oh, I could go and put my own like Wikipedia page together. I think you should. <laughs> I think so. I think we could do one for myself, uh, cause that would be great. And <laughs> then we could do one for the, uh, the drunken worm podcast. This could be interesting. Yeah, I'm trying right? to. I'm trying to get this image up on the screen here, and my computer is going really slow. That's I was okay. going to put it up on the screen so everybody could see what we were talking about. Yeah. yeah. There's Sesame Street too. Like how to talk to your kids about addiction. It's for hey. Sesame Street. Yeah. Um, I just watched a Sesame Street documentary, and it's called. There we go. Okay. Oh. Yeah. 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 So Christopher Robin, schizophrenia, um, Eeyore, depression, um, Winnie the Pooh, eating disorder. Yeah, that, that pretty much is. <laughs> um, is ADHD. Piglet has anxiety. Um, the owl is, is narcissistic. And um, the rabbit has OCD. Yeah. Wow. Sounds about right. Yeah, it does sound about right, doesn't it? <laughs> That's wow. awesome. I don't know if I can ever watch it the same again. Yeah, it's never going to be the same for anybody on that has seen this this broadcast. Um, if, for any of you out there watching Winnie the Pooh, please take care of your mental health. Um, it's very important, and um, make sure that we we have well rounded recovery. Right, guys. Um, that's that's so important too, is to be well rounded. So, um, Ashley, what are you doing um, as far as making sure that you are well-rounded with your recovery because you do a lot of stuff outside of um, just your regular job. It sounds like you have a lot of other hats that you wear. So what does that look like for you? Um, I think that it's, you know, giving back and service is something that keeps me sober. It makes me feel good about myself. Um, It gives me self-esteem. So, um, you know, I'm on the board of a recovery community organization um, and that's, you know, a big part of why I think I'm sober today is just that self-esteem aspect. And then that self-care thing they always talk about that I'm crappy at. And But everybody's like, what'd you do for self-care today? And then I'll be like, oh, I watched a TED Talk. And that's not yeah. self-care. But for me, it is. Yeah. Yeah, I love TED Talks, man. I, I had um, I had a, a, a guy on, Dylan Lunger, and on the podcast uh, about a month and a half ago who did a Ted talk and he was, he was amazing. Um, 
they, they work really well in the, although they're not evidence-based, I'll just put that out there. If you want to show one at a, a treatment center, run it by your clinical supervisor. Cause if you guys are supposed to be doing evidence-based stuff on that day that you're doing your group, um, it's definitely not evidence-based, but it's very informational. It could be a, it could be an educational, uh, or class that you do, but yeah, really good stuff out there with the Ted talks. Um, what, what about you, Brett? What do you do for your, um, keeping your self, uh, well-rounded with your mental health and, the other world that you occupy (laughs) that's a great question man great question i was i I knew you were going to come to me next and i was a little bit distracted trying to find the sesame street thing that ashley was talking about um (laughs) i I was actually talking with my sponsor about this um i guess yeah that was yesterday and time flies um you know i was talking about just how my life has has evolved and how my recovery looks different today than it did seven years ago um you know in the beginning i was going to meetings every day and staying in contact with a sponsor and like really plugged in as far as recovery went like the only things i did was was go to work and and do recovery things um you know and like today my life looks a little bit different uh, my job that I have now is a little bit more demanding. I work longer hours than I did when I first got clean. Um, and, and my recovery looks different. I don't attend, I don't attend as many meetings as I used to. Um, but now I have two recovery podcasts. So I feel like I'm constantly in contact with different people, um, that are in the recovery realm. Um, and I'm learning about all kinds of different things. Um, like Ashley and I were talking the other night about, different like using destigmatizing language and stuff and like i'm learning that because i'm i come from a 12-step background and i don't really know about the destigmatizing language and so i feel like i'm getting different perspectives and different outlooks from different people um so that plays a pretty big part of my recovery today is is just the, all the different conversations that i get to have with different people in the recovery community uh, in the harm reduction community in the mental health community, like all the different places that I get to do that. Um, and, and it looks different today as well. Cause I have service commitments at my home group. So I don't, I don't necessarily make as many meetings as I did. Um, but I'm of service. I chair a meeting once a week and I, I have other commitments that I do at my home group. So I still stay involved in my home group and still have like that core group of people that, that I stay in contact with pretty regularly that know who I am like inside and out and have, and see me, you know, a couple times a week and know what's going on in my life. But then I've also branched out and I feel like I have this whole online community of, of people that are in recovery. Yeah, that's, that's really great, man, because um, it's so important to have that community um, in, in recovery. You know, um, I, I was talking to my partner and, and he, he made a comment. He said, you have so many friends and um, it's, really crazy to think about like how many friends I had before I got into recovery and then how many friends I have now that I'm in recovery. And I I think that like before I got into recovery, I could count maybe on one hand, like maybe four or five friends that Mm -hmm. were like actually like solid friends. Everybody else was more an acquaintance, you know, they'd be like, Hey, what time are you dropping the stuff off? Well, I'll be there uh, shortly, you know, and I'm like two hours away you know, and all, all the chaos that went along with that. Right. Um, but now that circle of friends and that community that we've been able to build. Um, and then from that, we're now able to branch off and build another community of people that are outside of the recovery community and the podcast community and our family. Um, so yeah, so, you know, that community thing is, is so great. And, um, you know, I, I really wish I could sit here and tell you guys that I go to the gym five times a week or three times a week or two times a week or one time a week. Um, but that's not the case. Right. And my, a lot of times it's, it's a struggle for me to maintain that, um, schedule of the physical health part. Um, and you know, I'll be honest with you guys. There's sometimes when I get home. 
And all I want to do is I want to have a salad or I want to have dinner and, and I want to sit on my bed and I want to watch some, some Netflix and, you know, or, you know, and it's just like, I just want to unwind that way. And, um, that's probably the one thing that is the hardest for me to maintain on a regular basis. You know, I go to meetings on a regular basis. In fact, my home group is meeting tonight. So, um, I called my sponsor and I said, Hey, um, FYI, I'm not going to be at the meeting uh, next week. And he said, no, you better have a good reason. And I said, I did, I'm going to be of service. So, um, he, he was uh, happy to hear that. And, uh, part of that community that I've built and part of my routine now that meetings are back open is I have one of my sponsees, um, that comes up, um, he lives about 30 minutes away and, um, he jumps on to the meeting with me and then we hit black bear diner afterwards. And I'm going to put a plug in for black bear diner, because if you guys haven't been to a black bear diner, you're missing out. First of all, I'm going to tell you, they make their own, um, salad dressings. Uh, their blue cheese has bacon or no, excuse me, the ranch, um, homemade ranch has bacon bits in it, like real bacon bits and it's homemade. It's amazing. And also their blue cheese is homemade too. And I've learned that if I talk really nicely to my waitress over there, she gives me a little to go container. That's about that big and about that round. And, <laughs> and that's my supply. And so she's my new connect now. And so I tip her really well. And I told her, I said, if you ever quit your job, I'm, I'm going to be devastated and I'm probably going to have to go to rehab um, because uh, I'm addicted to your blue cheese um, salad dressing. And um, I'm not afraid to say that. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's interesting that you talked about the exercise thing, because that's one area that I struggle with, because when I start exercising, like, you know, we're all like... I can only speak for myself, but I'm very all or nothing. So I'm like going seven days a week. And if I don't work out like an hour each time, you know, then I'm like mad at myself. So, you know, I don't want to take days off. Then when I take days off, I just don't go for a year. So I'm really bad at that. Yeah. Mine, my whole thing is when I, when I work out, I'm like, cool. Okay. I have a plan, right? Cause I'm an addict. <laughs> like, of course I'm going to have a plan. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to do it this, this day, this day, and this day, and this day. And then I do really good for like two or three weeks. And then something comes up for me where like I have to break my routine. And when I break that routine, my whole system breaks down and I don't get the momentum to get back up and to go back in and do that. Um, and so I'm going to make a pledge. Tomorrow I will go back to the gym and start my routine. And then the next time I'm back on here, I will fill you in on how wonderful that's going. Um, and if anybody is on here that knows me, you can hold me to that on Facebook. If you would like to friend me on Facebook, please go to Carl Fessenden. Um, you can find me, uh, I'm on Brett's Facebook and, um, please. Um, but I think that it's good that we have people with in our lives that can hold us accountable for things that we say we're going to do because my old life was saying that I'm going to do things and then completely like not doing them. Right. So I don't have to live like that anymore. And now with this new life, I've had to teach myself that if I make a commitment to do something, then I've committed to myself to follow through with that commitment. And I'm going to feel so much better after I do that. I'd be curious because you, you talked about like losing that momentum. Have you seen that pattern in other areas of your life? Did you have that pattern in recovery? Because I know like for me, the first, man, two years I was like on and off with recovery. Like I'm, I'll be good for a couple of weeks. I'll be good for a couple of months. And then it's like, ah, screw it. I'm going to yeah. go get high. I'm going to go get drunk. And just like this constant up and down. Did you go through something similar in other areas? Yeah. yeah. So, um, really quickly, I, I want to touch a little bit. Heather, um, put a comment up, um, Heather, uh, thank you for putting that comment up. Um, she, um, talked about, um, having uh, the two uh, heart valves replaced and um, a jazzy pacemaker so she can't. Um, Heather, when I, when I came into recovery, um, I, I was diagnosed with congested heart failure. And I luckily, I, I didn't have to have any of the hardware implanted in me. Um, I, I, you know, I'm still checked out on a regular basis. Um, but I understand that the struggle is, you know, is there. So, 
But, you know, you can always work with your physician and come up with an exercise regimen. Even walking 30 minutes a day is a great way to maintain exercise. I've learned that, you know, I like to run. And even when I run, I'm not quite burning as well. I'm, I'm burning almost the same amount of calories um, were I to walk. So uh, when I first got clean, walking was like the thing that I was doing. And I was so happy to be able to just get out there and I would do new routes and I would walk around the mall and then I would be like, oh, I can go into that store and shop later and I can spend my money over here. And, you know, and so I'd like plan out my whole like weekend for shopping. And, um, but it really helped me do it. And I was only doing it maybe three or four times a week. Uh, so it was, um, you know, really, uh, really something beneficial that I was able to do. And, um, you know, but, but talk to your doctor about that. So Brett, to get back to your question, man, um, can you ask it again? Sorry. <laughs> no, you're good. You're good. I was just asking, cause you, you had mentioned you were talking about working out and just yeah. how once you lose the momentum, that then it's hard for you to get back in that routine of, of doing that daily or, or however often it was that you were doing your workout. And I was asking if you've seen that same pattern in other mm. areas of, of your life. Yeah. Unfortunately, I, I do see that in other areas of my life. Um, but I think the difference today between, um, you know, from back then to now is that I'm able to identify them and I'm able to identify earlier when the pattern starts to emerge. And then if I decide to act on it or if I don't decide to act on it, then that's on me, right? Then that's my choice that I've made. Um, and I'll tell you what, man, I'm, I'm lazy sometimes. <laughs> like mm -hmm. I really like, I like, I find comfort in being lazy and um, I don't want to say isolation because I, I don't like isolation. Um, I had a stint early in recovery where I was house sitting for my parents and they had gone away and I, it was, it was a two day weekend that I had. It was like in the middle of the week, I was working for Michael's as a custom framer over in Fairfield, California. And, um, when that, when my Monday rolled around, I worked in the afternoon. And so I had been sitting all day at the house and it, dude, it went from like this really nice mom and dad house into like this frat house in like two days. Because because my my mo at the time was to go over to the pizza place and order four pizzas, um, just for myself that would like get me through that whole week, and then I was microwaving pizza like each meal. So breakfast was pizza, lunch was pizza, and dinner um, was huh, guess what pizza. And um, so like I I went into this whole isolation stage where I was actually isolating. My sponsor called me. I was like, oh yeah, dude, uh, nope. <laughs> you know, and it was really bad. Right. But I, I, now I get really comfortable because I, I grew up as an only child. And so I'm really comfortable, like sitting on my own and doing things on my own, watching TV on my own. Um, now that I have a partner though, that's changing where like, I don't actually like to do things on my own because I really would like to be with that person doing things. And I find a lot of like happiness and joy, uh, from doing things with him. Uh, in fact, a lot of happiness and joy, but um, for me, the other areas of my life, especially when COVID hit was that I saw my breakdown in meeting attendance and mm -hmm. I, I can't speak for other people, but it wouldn't surprise me if I found out that other people had the same problem, you know, where, where we were going to meetings on a regular basis. We had in-person meetings. I had my men's meeting that I would hit every Thursday night without fail. And when the pandemic hit, you know, it was at a hospital. And so the hospital's like, yeah, we're shutting everything down. You guys can't do your meeting here. And then they made the uh, group decision to do all their meetings online. So for me, I do see it in uh, different areas of my life at times. But the thing that makes a difference now is that I'm able to identify it sooner. So, and then I have a choice, right? I have a choice whether or not to do something about it, right? Get back on the, on the horse, so to speak, and, you know, and, and start plugging away at it. But also the other key to this is being honest about it too, being honest with ourselves and being honest with other people. Because the other deceptive part about being in that stage is the deception of being dishonest with yourself and other people. So Brett, if you were to ask me, 
you know, early in recovery or the very end of my addiction, if you were to ask me that question, man, I would tell you a thousand reasons why I was doing so good. Right. Mm -hmm. But the reality of the situation is that, you know, it's really bad. You know, I'm not doing well and I'm trying to hide it up by telling lies, um, lying to myself and deceiving other people and, and putting all those other masks on. So nobody can really see the chaos and pain that's going on behind him. Yeah. Yeah. And Chrissy, Chrissy just said, isolation is real for some. This past year, I found myself falling into those same patterns. I had to consciously force myself to get out of wanting to do it. Yeah. Yeah, Chrissy, that's that's real talk right there, right? I mean, that's definitely, um, you know, uh, pulling yourself out is that's the hard part. Because once isolation hits, man, we want to roll with it. We're like, this is comfort to us. Mm -hmm. This is like taking that new blanket from Costco and wrapping yourself around it and being like, oh my gosh, this is the most amazing thing in the world. <sighs> but that's bad, right? Because even though it feels good, we're, we're, we're not doing a justice to ourselves. Well, they say the opposite of addiction is connection. That's right. Mm -hmm. I think I have to put like, strict boundaries on myself, you know, like I'll give myself a little empathy if I feel like staying in bed one day, I'll allow that to happen, but anything more than one day, then I need to make myself get up, take a shower and go somewhere because otherwise I'll be in bed for a month, two months, and then I'll be depressed and, you know, you know where that goes. So I, I know myself and I have to be strict with myself on that. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, if anybody is just joining us right now, um, welcome to um, the Recovery Revolution live broadcast. Um, for those of you that might not know who I am, my name is, um, I almost said my name was Brett. There you go, man. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and we're going to be changing names here. Um, uh, I know it's Brett, too. Over, the guy with the beard over there, um, yeah, his name is Ashley, and then Ashley is Brett. Yeah, so we're we're just going to switch it all up for people. No, um, my name is Carl. I'm the host of the Drunken Worm podcast. And, of course, you have the lovely Ashley over here in the corner. Well, my corner. I don't know what corner you're in. <laughs> On your screen, Ashley. Oh, there we go. Three oh, screen split. I didn't mean to do that view. I've never oh, done that one before. No, that's okay. I feel like the Brady Bunch. Um, we're going to go with it. So um, we have Brett right in the middle, um, uh, Fear the Beard. And we have the lovely Ashley over on the other side. And uh, we welcome you guys to listening to this episode. Um, we're just talking a little bit about our own personal stories of recovery. We're talking about, um, right now we're talking about our own personal well-being and how we're maintaining um, a well-rounded uh, lifestyle and what that looks for us, um, what that looks like for us. And also, um, we just started talking a little bit about the dangers of isolation and what that feels like um, for some of us. So, and Chrissy, um, that's so true. I think unresolved issues like guilt or regret just go um, too heavy sometime. Thank God for recovery, um, showing me how to build a better foundation, 100%. Absolutely, Chrissy. Thank you very much for posting that. And thank you for joining us tonight, too. We really appreciate you guys being here. Yeah, and if... I think we could uh, could pause for a quick second and roll the uh, the sober birthday mm. thing for the month of December. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Was, you got some birthday music for it. I, I do have some birthday music. I'm ready to nice. go, man. All right, here oh, we go. Let's do it. All right.
congratulations to everyone and just as a quick note we do have a new sponsor uh doing it sober.com they have all kinds of awesome medallions and recovery uh jewelry and gifts so if you're looking for something for someone that's celebrating a sober birthday be sure to head over to doing it sober.com that sounds like an interesting page it's yeah, very June. cool. I actually yes. I ordered a ring from them the other day. I'm I'm still waiting on really? it to get here. But what, what kind yeah. of ring? Uh, okay. I, I got it. They make rings out of they do the NA and AA coins and they make oh. rings out of those. Dude, I've wanted to do that. That's yeah, they, so they cool. do them on their website. I ordered one for my seven year. Oh, that's so cool. Can they do and does it have to be just the metallic one or can it be the ones that are painted too? Uh, they have a bunch of different options on the website. I'm not sure if they do the colored ones, but they do different finishes. You can do like a, oh, I think they had like bronze and silver and gold and different finishes that they do on the actual metal after they make it into the ring. Okay. That's awesome, man. Sorry. I am copying. Uh, somebody texted me and wanted me the link to the podcast here. So um, I am just, give me a second um brett if you want to uh brett why don't you talk for a moment tell us tell oh, us your man. story <laughs> there's not enough time in the day for my story man <laughs> 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 and there's my wife commented in there asking why my birthday wasn't on the video but it it was so maybe you just need to rewatch this again <laughs> oh <Uh-oh. Uh-oh. laughs> I'm just Uh-oh. Kidding. It was there towards the bottom. If, we see, if we see an object fly across your screen at your head, <laughs> I I will be a witness. I just disappear <laughs> from the screen. Yeah, exactly. Just, the camera goes out. Ashley, it's up to you and I to take the episode <laughs> through for the next hour. Um, <laughs> Do you think we could convince his wife to be on the Valentine's Day episode with them? Dude, that would be really good. Okay, so I'll tell you what. I have a brilliant idea. How about you let me host your podcast for Valentine's and we can interview you and your wife. Okay. I I actually, I did an episode with my wife. Uh, It's been a while now, but we did one talking. I I interviewed her asking her questions about what it's like to be married to, uh, to someone in recovery because she is a normie. Yeah. Oh, is she? She is. that's great because my partner's a normie too um and uh yeah so but he doesn't he doesn't drink around me which is really nice and he's actually um made a commitment not to drink anymore himself because he um, i don't i i wouldn't categorize him with an addiction uh substance use disorder or anything like that but i think just for health reasons and Mm -hmm. he sees me doing it so yeah that's awesome person i'm dating is not in recovery either so Mm. so how how do you guys okay so ashley how long have you been dating your person for four years oh wait okay news break four years and did you guys meet before you got into recovery or after 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 okay but you just celebrated four years right in may so yes i did not do that full year thing oh that's i was i was working my way up to the question i'm working my way up to the question okay so ashley is a statistic that has shown now did you find it hard to navigate that in early recovery um i think i would have if i had dated someone um with the substance use disorder um, but he's very against substances and very like, so I think because I wasn't around it and because it was so like, you know, frowned upon, um, I think it helped in some ways. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I could, I could see how that works. Like, um, you know, I have, uh, a few friends that have done it, um, and it's, it's really worked for them. Um, but like, like I said, I've had a lot of people that have tried to do it and it didn't work for them too. So congratulations, Ashley, because that's, that's actually a really big achievement for you and, and everything. And, 
um, that uh, that really makes me happy to hear that you guys are in a, a flourishing, um, healthy relationship now. Well, it's healthy most of the time. I don't know yeah. that any relationship's a hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, but you know, we we gotta we gotta believe that it can be healthy as as much as possible. You know, but but with any relationship, you know, there's going to be ups and downs. Um, you know, but one of the keys is that we have this ability to communicate with our partner and the ability to communicate with other people about um, how that relationship is going. And so for me, that communication level, in fact, we, we communicated earlier today because um, he, he uh, I ask him sometimes to repeat things and he said it's frustrating for him when I ask him to repeat. And so we had this whole conversation about it. And I know before when somebody would have said that to me, like I would have been like, well, you know, sign language deuces to you. And, you know, like if I want to ask you to repeat something, then that's my right. But it was healthy the way that we had this conversation and he was able to explain his feelings and how he felt about it. And I was, I was able to receive what he was saying to me. And then explain to him, you know, why I asked him to repeat things at times. And it made sense for both of us. And so we were able to move on from it. And, um, you know, it was a healthy way to communicate with each other. And sure, it was a little bit uncomfortable because I, I was sad. I was like, oh, you know, I don't, I don't want you to be annoyed with me. And that really makes me sad if I've done something that, you know, causes you to, to feel that way. But it was good that we were able to talk about it in a healthy pro-social manner. So, yeah. Yeah, and I think that's one of the things, you know, during active addiction, the chaos, you know, like it was like I shut off the chaos and didn't even realize it. And now it's, you know, those uncomfortable conversations are uncomfortable, but that's where growth happens. And that's where I learn about myself. I learn about him. I learn about strengths and weaknesses. So they're great, uncomfortable conversations. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, did did you guys hear the ding? Yes. Or is that only me? Oh, okay. What is what does, <laughs> does that mean? What is the ding, Brett? What I don't, did I I don't know. Was that on? Was that on my oh, end? I I don't know. I don't think it's on mine because I have on do not disturb. <laughs> yes, so do I. So I'm not sure what that was. But I I felt like I've just won something. So no, that's Brett, gonna be later or, on. That's gonna be later on when we give away the sober mode hoodie. If oh. anyone. Okay. If you want to be entered in for a chance to win the hoodie, all you have to do is comment hashtag yes. sober mode in the comments and you will automatically be entered for your chance to win a Please free end. sober mode hoodie. Sober mode hoodie. And guys, these hoodies are awesome looking. Brett, put that graphic up of the hoodie, man. Get I these guys excited about it. All of you should put that up because this would be something that I would definitely be proud to wear. In fact, um, I, I mentioned it earlier. I bought two t-shirts of this one for myself and one for my partner um, just actually this afternoon. Uh, and um, I love, I love the graphics on it. Um, it it's kind of a throwback to um, my Nintendo days and, you know, and stuff like that. So uh, really cool to see that. Yeah, and it's funny you sent me the link for their shop earlier in the day on Facebook Messenger, and it's like, oh, yeah. they're actually going to be sponsoring tonight's episode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's awesome. Uh, Sober Mode, um, you guys are amazing. Uh, thank you for everything you do for the recovery community and getting that swag out there for us uh, to wear and to show our pride that we are sober today and we don't have to live like that anymore. Um, and I'll, I'll do a little plug for, for mine. If you want to go to my website, I also have swag on my website, uh, the drunken worm podcast.com. And if you click on the shopping link, um, it's going to be on the homepage and it's going to be uh, right in the middle. It says shop now, and that will take you over to my online store. And I have a bunch of swag on there and you'll be able to support, um, my podcast, uh, as well as the recovery community, um, so, you know, if you guys want to check that out, a lot of great stuff on there as well. Um, and Brett has some on his his website as well. So you can definitely get a lot of that unique uh, sober uh, swag out there that you won't find at conventions. You'll find it online, but you definitely won't find it at conventions or things like that. So yet. definitely show your pride, guys. Yeah, yet, yet. Soon to be. 
So right. where did you come up with the name, The Drunken Worm? I, I oh, need to know. That's a really good question. Thank you very much for asking. Um, so uh, <laughs> this is a great story. Um, so I worked at Duffy's Napa Valley Rehab, and I came up with the idea of doing a podcast. Well, I so I, I got to do a shout out to Shane Raymer um, of That Sober Guy podcast. Um, Shane has an amazing podcast, and he was one of the first podcasts that I listened to. And um, so I, I, I was like, oh, maybe I could do a podcast because I'm also a DJ. Uh, and I, I was a rave DJ back in the mid 2000s and did that whole scene and everything. And so for me, audio and music and stuff like that has always been part of my 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 uh, story. And so I thought about doing a podcast, but then I got working, going to school and stuff. And so. I was like, well, you know, I'll kind of put it on the back burner because I'm really focused on getting um, my credentialing and stuff for substance use counseling and, and all of that stuff. And so when I worked at Duffy's, uh, there was a great man, um, a very smart man, a very intelligent man, a very good looking man, uh, Dr. Marty Lajoie. Um <laughs> And uh, he has a radio voice. And I've always been told I have a radio voice. Um and so I, I went up to him and I said, Marty, what if we could get Duffy's to do a podcast? Like we could get paid to like what we're the three of us are doing right now. Like we could get paid to do that. And he was like, oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> kind of blew me off. But no, I, I don't hold that against him. But I did put him on my four step. Um, so, uh, you know, but we we had this really cool connection. And so when I left Duffy's, I actually had the time to start doing broadcasting and learning about podcasting and stuff like that. And so I um, started watching another podcaster and a um, entrepreneur. Um, his name is Pat Flynn. And he lit the fire under me and said, you can do this. And so I started doing it. And during that time, I was trying to come up with a name for the podcast. And so at Duffy's, I did a series of educational videos and um, process groups and Carl's Corner. And I was like, that could be cute as like a podcast, Carl's Corner, um, you know, and like, you know, I'll like do the Masterpiece Theater music and I'll have on a smoking jacket and this big wing chair that I'll sit in and, you know, and it'll be very like Masterpiece Theater esque. Um, and so, but then I started doing research on names and stuff and I, th took that idea and I said, okay, I could do a segment on my podcast calls called Carl's corner, you know, down the road, which could actually happen. Never know. Um, and so I started looking at podcasts and I started looking at recovery podcasts in particular, because, um, what Pat Flynn said is that you need to do your research. You have to have 25 episodes already planned out before you post your first episode. And so I did all the work. I planned out 25 episodes. Um, I grabbed Pete Nielsen from uh, the California Consortium of Addiction Professionals and Programs. Um, I put him on the podcast. In fact, he'll be coming on next month. I have an episode airing with him. And so looking at all the names of the podcast, I wanted something that's, that stood out. And so I was, I was watching um, the Food Network and this tequila commercial where they were talking about tequila. And I was like, oh, tequila, they have a worm that's in the bottom of the bottle. And I was like, what if the worm had a podcast called The Drunken Worm? So I looked up Drunken Worm. And in, in actuality, if you look up Drunken Worm, it's a bar in um, Indiana or something, I believe, called The Drunken Worm. And so I was like, okay. But I didn't find anything else. And it didn't look like it was trademarked or anything. God, I really hope it isn't because I'm going to be in a lot of trouble if it is. And then I was like, well, maybe I'll call it The Drunken Worm Podcast. And so I looked up a website and I went on to GoDaddy, and the domain was available. The name was available. I did Google searches for it. And what I learned from DJing, because my DJ name is DJ1Up, and I picked that name in the early 2000s. And when I picked that name, nobody had that name. And now there's a lot of people with that name. And so doing the research part for me was really important that nobody else had a podcast named The Drunken Worm Podcast. So if you guys are looking for the podcast, please include the word podcast at the end. Because if you look up the drunken worm, 
Uh, it's going to take you to a place that you don't want to go. Um, but <laughs> if you look up the Drunken Worm podcast, then that will be a great place for you to go because we talk all about recovery. We talk about mental health. Um, and I have a lot of great people that come on to the uh, podcast. It's definitely a conversation catcher name. Thank you. I, I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, when I told my mom what the name was, she was like, oh my God, that's so good. You have to get it trademarked. So we're, we're in the process of getting it uh, trademarked there and, you know, doing all the right stuff with it. But um, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's really catchy. And, and so I sat with it for a few days and I was like the Drunken Worm podcast. That's it. That's got to be it. So uh, I came up with the logo and, and kept the logo really simple. I was trying to get like a, a, a worm that looked drunk that was like wrapped around a microphone and like doing karaoke or something. And I was like, nah, it's a little like amateurish. So <laughs> Carl's corner makes me think of Mr. Rogers. I don't know why it's just, yes. like... it's, it's lovely. Um, <laughs> oh, well, I was thinking of maybe doing like a whole segment series of like Carl's corner, but I, I don't know what that would look like. Uh, cause what my clinical director at Duffy said was that she wanted to actually get me a smoking jacket with a chair and I would sit there and talk to all the patients or the clients and stuff. And it was going to be this like whole theatrical like thing. Cause that's, that's the way that we were there. It's like, it was very theatrical and like we had all these crazy ideas and it was a lot of fun to work there. Um, so yeah, yeah we'll, we'll see, we'll see. Maybe, you know, maybe all, maybe this coming year I will do a segment called Carl's Corner uh, during my my episodes. Yeah, you can go somewhere out and maybe. There we go. That's the logo. Thank you, Brett. Yeah. Yeah, I appreciate that, man. That's nice. I like it, actually. The simplicity of it, it's really cool. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. It was relatively easy to make. I did it on Canva. So um, I think I'm safe. <laughs> you made it. Nobody else can yeah, replicate nobody it. Else, nobody else can replicate it. It's all mine. So Bruce, I would be a great Q&A. Bruce, do you want to elaborate on that a little bit, buddy? Oh, I appreciate that, Zoe. Oh, Zoe, hi. OMG, this is my um, great cousin, Zoe. Zoe, welcome to the show. Really appreciate you coming on. I just sent her a link over on Facebook, so cool. Awesome. Glad you could make it. Welcome. Hi, Zoe. <laughs> Zoe's awesome. She's from Montana. It's very cold right there now. <laughs> So, and Zoe, we have um, the lovely Ashley over here. She's from Florida. Um, Ashley, are you familiar with what snow is? I am familiar with snow. <laughs> okay. Well, I wasn't sure, but, you know. <laughs> and we have Brett. He's from Texas. Um, so, I, Brett, I don't know. Do you know what snow is? Do you have snow in Texas? I know you have cows. I, occasionally. Occasionally. Big, and babies. Babies and cows. Yes, babies. <laughs> Uh oh. <laughs> so yeah. So uh, what what were we talking about? Uh, right. You have so tell us a little bit about your podcast, man, and and how you came up with your name. We talked a little bit about my podcast, uh, the Drunken Worm podcast, and how I came up with that name. But tell us a little bit about what that journey was like for you. I'll tell you about it in a minute when when we don't have the the fussy baby. Oh, okay. Yes, yes. That that would be good. I thought you just had sound effects. Um. Okay, great. So yeah, so we have a lot of a uh, lot of people on the uh, stream right now. Um, welcome Zoe again, um, Bruce. Uh, thank you for your input there, brother. We really appreciate that. Would be a great questions and answer um, on your podcast and your smoking jacket. Oh yeah, that would actually be really cool, man. Um, so if if you guys want to tune in, although we would have to do a video of that. Maybe I could start doing short YouTube videos of like Q and A's like once a month. I could do like publish a, um, a Carl's corner, uh, video and I'll wear a smoking jacket. I have a winged chair downstairs that sits next to a fireplace so we could easily, easily put something together 
and I could have like a, a, I, I don't smoke, but I could have like a fake like Sherlock Holmes smoking pipe. I don't know. Was that hard for you in recovery? Because I know it was for me. Everyone was at the smoking table. I I don't drink coffee and I don't smoke. So it was like. No, uh, for me, the smoking wasn't hard. It was actually. um, So I smoked in the military. I was in the the United States Marine Corps. And um, so I smoked a bubble pipe. Yes, that would be so (laughs) appropriate, Brett. Or Bruce, I'm sorry. Um, a bubble pipe. That's fantastic, man. I'm gonna look for a um a old school like bubble pipe and I'll be blowing bubbles. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, no, so smoking for me has never really been like a thing. I used to smoke occasionally, like when I would go to bars or um when I would go to raves um and do like ex- ecstasy and stuff. I would smoke then because like it was just kind of tied into the culture and stuff. But it, I wouldn't often buy a pack of cigarettes. And so coming into recovery, you know, a lot of people smoke, right? They drink coffee at meetings and they smoke at meetings. It's like, you know, it's that old saying, we're trading one for another. And so for me, the whole idea about smoking was that, you know, I don't want to get hooked on anything else. That's a lie. Um, coffee slightly addicted to coffee i at least have to have two cups a day preferably starbucks and preferably one of the large trenta size cups that's about this big um but that counts as one yeah no that counts as yeah that counts as one thank you very much for um keeping me honest um (laughs) so for me smoking wasn't like really a, a draw um no pun intended uh but the thing that really like was triggering for me is these guys that brett close your ears the guys that vape and those big vapes and those big clouds brett thank you guilty um guilty uh but like it doesn't trigger me now because i worked through it and i was like okay you know i i have to learn how to deal with the uncomfortability of this and the trigger because if this bothers me, you know, what would happen if something actually really triggered me really hard, right? So being able to kind of work through that really, really helped. So for guys like Brett, I thank you because, um, you know, putting me into those type of situations. But also I had a choice too, right? I didn't have to stand outside with all the smokers, right? I didn't have to be around all of them. I wanted to be because they're all my friends and that's where they would congregate and we would talk and stuff. But, um, yeah, but for me, smoking is, you know, I, I don't smoke now. I haven't smoked in probably 20 years and it, it wasn't a draw for me to, again, no pun intended, um, to come back into the smoking realm once I got into recovery because recovery was so hard for me to deal with my emotions and my feelings and my, you know, my history of addiction. Yeah. I think for me, it was just, I, you know, I didn't smoke. So I felt like I was an outsider at the smokers table, you know, you wanted to be outside, be around everybody, but I didn't really fit in because I didn't smoke. So that was a hard part for me. Yeah. Yeah. And finding that community, right? Because like you said, you didn't feel like you fit in. How many, how many of your friends are smokers? Now or I'm I'm talking about a rehab. Everybody smoked us all. Oh, yeah, smoke. everybody smokes in rehab. Um, I was so I was fortunate enough to go to what they call outpatient. So for those of you, um, uh, maybe Zoe, um, <laughs> Zoe, if you're not familiar with what outpatient is, it's um, the second phase of a typically a second phase of a rehab stint. So that somebody that does drugs, they go to an outpatient program. So that means that they can stay at their house or stay at a sober living environment, which we call an SLE. And then they go to a building, you know, however many times a week. So it's kind of like going to the doctor's office and they go and they sit in groups, you know, three to maybe four hours a day. And then they get to go back. If you're in a residential setting, that means that you're living there. So you are, it's like a dorm going to college and it's typically like multiple people to a room. And you guys are, are eating, sleeping, and doing groups there. So for me, going into rehab was the outpatient 
part. And so when I was assessed by Kaiser, uh, because of the, I don't know what, I'd have to ask her why she didn't put me into residential or why she didn't put me into what they call day treatment. Um, but I went into early recovery, um, uh, outpatient treatment. So I was there one, two, three, I think three days a week. And then the rest of the time I could go and, you know, work and, and do school and stuff. But I actually started school, um, six months into recovery, um, which is another great story. <laughs> I went back to school. It took three years. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so I graduated in June of this oh, year. Wow, congratulations. Thank you. I'm in school for my master's right now, my MBA. So wow, okay. Anything's possible in recovery, right? That is right. You are you are one smart cookie. Um <laughs> Sorry, inside joke with my sister. Um, so anyways, uh, yeah. So yeah, or school is possible, guys. Um, I get a lot of clients. Um, I get a lot of clients that want to get into the counseling field. Because, um, and I think that that's pretty common in, in rehabs where they have people that are like, oh my gosh, you guys have changed my life. And I want to I want to do what you guys do. And, you know, and I, I usually sit them down and have a really like honest talk with them. I'm like, dude, if you want to do it, that's great. Um, it's, it's a thankless job. It's, you know, you, you're, you're going to get a few of those clients where it's going to be like an amazing transformation. And that really makes it worth it for me. But a lot of the clients you get, you know, are going to be, um, kind of repeat clients. Um, that's another really weird thing that I noticed when I started working in rehabs is it was like working in a hotel. And so we'd have clients come in for 90 days. They go back out for like two months and then they would be like a revolving door. And with drug medical they would time it so that they could get they could do their their rehab because you're able to do two treatment sessions with, with drug medical per year and um they they will plan it out so that like during the winter months they're going to be in treatment and more in the summer months they can go be on the street or whatever and um it's it's a really um it's a sad cycle to see you know We don't have those options here, so that's interesting that they can go twice a year. I mean, it stinks yeah. that it's repeat, but it's nice that the option's there. Yeah, and you know, and I, I really try to space it out for the clients um, now that come into our program. Um, you know, if they decide that they're going to go back out and it's not a successful completion of program, um, you know, and they're like, oh my gosh, I, I just, I, I want to start working and you know, and giving us a hundred reasons why they don't need to be there anymore. Um, it's, it's difficult because a lot of us deep down inside really kind of know that what the denial part is going on and kind of like what the underlying thing for them is. And <clears throat> there it's, it's hard to watch them leave, but it's also kind of comforting to know that we could bring them back in if they just choose to come back. And so whenever somebody leaves, I always tell them, I say, go talk to partnership health or go talk to your provider, get back on track and make sure that you're in a program of some sort, because even if you leave residential treatment, you might be able to step down your level of care to, um, you know, an outpatient program or something like that and try to get yourself in a sober living environment an uh, SLE. And a lot of these programs um, have grants that will pay for people to go there. So they don't have to pay for anything up front, which is really amazing. Do you have that kind of stuff there, Brett? I, I'm not really overly familiar with the whole uh, rehab system. <laughs> Honestly, I, I really don't know. Um, I've never been to rehab. I, I detoxed in county jail, so I don't know. Yeah, that's a whole other type of rehab right there. Yeah, yeah, it's very different. <laughs> There's a lot of states that have a lot more than Florida. I mean, we're 50th for mental health funding and substance use disorder funding. So it's, you know, there's a lot of people that there's not beds for. It's mm -hmm. expensive. Yeah. So. It is expensive. I mean, I've worked private sector where they're charging $2,500 a day. And 
now I work in the, um, uh, <laughs> I just blanked. Oh, nonprofit sector. And, you know, in, in there, you know, we're charging around $200 a day. So if you look at the comparison between 200 to $2,500 a day, I mean, it's, it's huge. I mean, it's really, but even with $200 a day, if you have 25 clients and you keep your facility filled for one full year, that's a substantial amount of money that you're getting to house these people, to treat these people, to pay salaries and stuff. And a lot of these companies can make a, a, a decent income, you know, to grow and to make themselves bigger. But the problem that I've seen, and this is just my own personal opinion, guys, I'm, I'm not tooting the horn for anybody, but from what I've seen, and there are going to be people out there that are going to say, well, Carl, you're right. The world has to revolve around money. But the problem that I've seen with a lot of these companies um, and not Duffy's was really good about not having like the money part being like our front end, um, you know, thing, but other companies I've worked for, it was like all about the money and, you know, and, and it was very, um, concerning to me that like, you know, we would receive emails saying that like, Hey, great job on getting all your billing in. And the way that that feels as a clinician is like, well, what about the service that we're providing for people and what about the quality of care that we're providing for them and you know why couldn't you send an email out saying hey great job on getting all of your quality care work done you know and that was good because it helps support the billing you know um so it's it's really hard to work in this industry because a lot of it is wrapped up in money and i don't like that about the industry um but i also understand that we have to have the money in there because we have to pay salaries. Somebody has to pay my salary. Like there's, there's no, no way around it. And being a supervisor, my salary is higher than, you know, most of the other people at the facility. And so I understand that, you know, we have to keep the money in, but the way that you keep money into rehabs is providing quality care for your clients, providing good documentation for them, that will help them as they moved through their journey. And from there, the money will follow. And that's, that's, I think that's kind of the hard thing for some of these organizations to understand is that if, you know, we focus on uh, community care and quality care for the clients, then that money is going to just, it's going to start to flow. So there's plenty of people that need help, you know, so if we can stop having to have repeat clients, Right. The customers, that's the goal. I mean, there's enough people that need help that they can keep rolling forever. Right, exactly, exactly. So we're, you know, we've got Bubble Pipe there, we got Zoe. So, oh, there's, what did I win? What is going on here, man? I don't know. We still haven't given away the hoodie, oh and not very God. many people have entered. I guess there's not a no. whole lot of people that want a sober mode hoodie. So, guys, if you want a free hoodie, and they will send it to you, right, Brett? I'm not just free talking of, about yeah, free of charge. Free of charge in your size. That hoodie right here on my screen, it says sober mode on. Put in the hashtag. What is it, Brett? Sober mode. <laughs> Put in hashtag sober mode in the chat comment area here. And we are going to pick a winner before this broadcast is over. Have we had anybody put one in yet? So far, there have only been two people that have entered. Oh, there have only been two people that have entered. So only if you two. put yours in right now, you have a very high probability of getting picked as one of the lucky winners to receive this hoodie. And um, it, you're reading on the website, the quality looks really good. Um, it looks very warm. It has two drawstrings on it. It comes with a hood. Um, that's not extra. You won't have to pay for that. Um, the shipping <laughs> is going to be free. And guess what, guys? The best part about this hoodie right now is it comes with the pocket in the front. So when your hands get cold, you can stick your hands in that pocket, and you're going to stay warm all night. Well, maybe not if you're like Zoe living in the snow, because then you're going to have to have an extra jacket. But it's as good as a first layer base layer. And if you don't want the hoodie, you can enter, and you can give it to me, because it's a pretty dang good hoodie. That's right. That's <laughs> right. Um, but I think that we should work out something for the host of the uh, the show here 
to um swag out in uh uh sober uh swagger i agree we had we had a, a different uh recovery apparel sponsor a few weeks ago and he sent us some some of his shirts so yeah I, I maybe, agree. dude maybe i can maybe i can sponsor oh i'm like i'm like this is one of mine this is bottle rock sorry guys <laughs> this is like the most inappropriate t-shirt to be wearing on a recovery stream um but it's so comfortable um if if you're unfamiliar with what bottle rock is it's a um uh basically a food and wine festival in napa and they have four or five huge stages um the williams sonoma stage is really amazing i got to work that and uh did security for him and so got to meet a lot of celebrities i met snoop dogg and you know all these guys that came up on stage and but it definitely um does scream um i feel like i want to have that tape that they put on like the um the the tv shows like F if you have an unapproved logo you know they, they put tape all the way across so that you can't see the logo but you just see the 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 tape, right? Yeah, gaff tape. Gaff tape. Okay, Brett, if you ever see gaff tape, maybe you could send me some and I'm gonna I'm gonna block out all the logos on my shirt the <laughs> next time that I'm on on the stream with you guys. No worries, man. And you were talking about coffee earlier. Have you heard of Brainwash Coffee Company? Brainwash? Um yeah. no, I haven't. But uh, do have. tell do tell they're actually a sponsor of my other show recovery survey okay. and they give 50 percent of their profits to uh different rehab facilities oh wow that's really cool man yeah brainwash and, and their coffee is very good is it i've gone through two bags so far do they have pods for the keurig machines oh that i'm not sure of mm. no i don't know because you know i live on that at work yeah, I have I have, I have one of the, like the right refillable one of the refillable cups. So I just oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah. And then that way you can actually control the amount of coffee that goes into them. You can make it really strong if you wanted to. Very strong. Yeah, and they all have, <laughs> they all have a different recovery slogan. I can't remember the names of them, but they were they have some really creative names for their different blends. Yeah. That's uh that's fantastic um so you you said it was brainwash uh-huh brainwash coffee company okay i'm i'm gonna look that up that sounds me, me too <laughs> i don't <laughs> drink coffee but i maybe yes. i'll find somebody that does find somebody that wants to be brainwashed ashley that's that's the key you can just say hey have you been brainwashed lately and then you can be like <laughs> <laughs> brainwash coffee i like that i like that um uh, we should we should we should we should do a coffee brand called sober af coffee that I like that. that dude that would sell we could sell it to meetings and be like You're I, drinking I also, we also AF. need to have like a uh, a recovery podcast convention there's so I many of us too, now man. That would be really cool. So we should get together with Shane since um, Shane's big time. And <laughs> we should tell him like, hey, we want to do a convention. And you're in Southern California. So why don't you host it? And then we'll come and join you. There you go. <laughs> he can plan it. He can plan it too. Yeah, like, he what? can plan it. He doesn't and, have to pay for it. On. Yeah, and pay for it because he's big time. <laughs> I'm sure oh he'll love that we're volunteering. I never, I hope he never gets a hold of this. <laughs> no, I'm sure, I'm sure he's watching the live stream. We're big time yeah. now. Shane, if you're out there, brother. Um, and we know Shane you Ringer. are. We know that, you are. That's sober guy. Yeah, we know that you're out there, man. Um, Brett, <laughs> Brett and I would both like to be on your podcast. Um, maybe together. That would be fun. Um, and uh, we'll put you on our podcast. So if, if you would like for that. Free. And for free, too. Yeah, if you do us for free, we'll do you for just oh my gosh brett get us out of this conversation <laughs> right right maybe we should uh maybe we should give away this uh the sober mode hoodie i, I think what do you so, think man. i think we yeah, should i even i even have some fun do we have fun music have anybody else anybody else put in their stuff i can't believe bruce hasn't gone for the free hoodie or zoe yeah zoe if you're out there and you're listening um <clears throat> or my wife yeah why isn't <clears throat> bruce <laughs> Bruce, 
Bruce, put up put up your your uh, your hashtag there. Uh, I I don't see who's in the room. I just see the comments. Yeah, I don't know how to see who's still on. I don't know how to do that. Maybe there's nobody listening to us anymore. Maybe I drove them away with my. There's still people on. Oh, see, there's Zoe. Zoe just commented. Oh, okay, good. Zoe, thank you, thank you. Boom. So there, there we go. And and thank you, Zoe, for being a good listener. (laughs) Thank you, Zoe. Here, Chrissy, are you gonna put yours in? Okay, there we go. Oh, there's Bruce. There's Bruce. Uh All right. Now I just right. need my wife to enter. Yeah, no, no, that, that's cheating. That's not Wait, cheating. Can I, log in, can I log in under mine and just put you mine? Can. In? You can. Oh can God. I do mine then? Go for it. Yeah, but we're not going to get picked. He has to pick somebody else. No, no, it's 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 a built-in thing on Streamyard. It randomly picks. Oh, really? I don't Wait, it. hold yeah. on. How do I get on here then? I feel uh, I just log on, uh, pull up Facebook, and then comment through I... Facebook. Wait, hold on. How do I? Um, Ashley did it. There's Ashley. 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 Um. Oh my gosh. I recognize her. Hold on. Let me. Let me get my phone. (laughs) Um. There's multiple browser windows. Yes, there's multiple browser windows, but I'm gonna log in from my phone because though the video is live now. Oh, there we go. Okay. I feel. Um, I think my wife stopped watching because she hasn't commented yet. So yeah oh this is weird i'm looking at myself it is strange oh, there's like a 10 second delay it's weird oh right? there is yeah look at that's yeah that's uh-huh. that's us Ta-da! valerie um, comment hashtag sober mode for your chance to win a hoodie right okay so hashtag make sure i spelled that right <laughs> Uh, okay there we go carl fessenden just uh put his in there oh there it is yeah that's right oh that's a good picture there too look at those two guys just super two very handsome gentlemen that's right masks on (laughs) so who's gonna win I don't know. Should we should we do it now or should we give some other uh, let's, people? A okay, chance? let's give them let's okay. I'm gonna set a timer. So guys, you we have five minutes. If you still want to get in on this, and maybe everybody that's in the chat room has already put it in, so maybe the five minutes isn't gonna matter. Um, oh, but Valerie, I wonder even, Valerie just commented and she hasn't said so. Oh, there she went. Oh, there she goes. She, Valerie, thank you. Thank you for getting in on this. <laughs> Valerie Madsen. Valerie, welcome to the show. I'm so glad that you could make it today. Valerie and I are office buddies. Um, We work together. And Valerie is this amazing, amazing lady. And if you guys ever want any um, advice on shopping or shoes, um, Valerie is the person that you need to ask. Uh, for your shopping questions. And Valerie actually helped me pick out my mother a beautiful necklace, and we got it at a very good price. Um, so thank you, Valerie. We're so glad that you're here today. Um, I thought you were working, um, but I'm not here to judge if you're listening to us <laughs> while you're working. Um, <laughs> but uh, yes, it's going to be fantastic. We're going to be giving away a hoodie. So uh, we're let's give them a few more minutes, Brett. We'll, we'll let everybody um, in on the... Uh, Oh, I love you, Carl. Thank you. I love you too, dear. Um, that's that was amazing. Um, Valerie, did my package arrive at work? <laughs> Valerie, I might need to get with you because you know the MB in school for my MBA, and I'm not a shopper. So shoes, my oh. shoe game's not good. Yeah, Valerie will. She will get you some game on shoes. Oh my gosh, it's amazing. Oh, it did come. Wonderful. Okay. <laughs> I appreciate that. I Well, I have all my Amazon packages going to work now um, because, dude, I okay, so I sit there and at work, they, we could open up our own UPS store. And Valerie, I'm going to throw you under the bus a little bit here, but don't worry. You won't mind. Um, so like my other, my other boss, um, Miss Sheila and Valerie, they are the shopping queens, right? And so my first day, I swear they have like two or three or four packages arrive and they're opening them up. It's like, Oh my God, girl, this dress. Oh my God, girl, the shoes. Right. And I was like, what is going on here? And then the next day, okay, good. I'm glad it's okay. Cause I'm continuing. Um, <laughs> and then the next day, like the same thing. I'm like, what are you ladies doing? And 
Valerie, sometimes you don't have to buy everything you see online. I'm just saying. <laughs> Maybe shopping for self care. Shopping, self care. Yes, yes, that's what we'll go with. <laughs> yes, absolutely, Ashley. Shopping is her self care, but it, but honestly, Valerie is like such a good shopper, and she finds the, as she would say, I find the toughest, which means amazing things. She she should be like, oh my god, Carl, look at that's so tough. And she'll be showing me a pair of boots, and I'm like, yeah, you're right, they're tough. <laughs> but. That's that's my life now, and I, I love working there. It's so much fun. We have we have such a good time there. So, Valerie, thank you for being here tonight. I really appreciate the support. Has she picked out some good shoes for you? Well, most of hers are high heels. Um, but actually, you know, she asked me. She said, "What size are you?" And I said, "I'm a 13 because uh, I don't have abnormally small feet." Um, and so she was like, "Okay, never mind." And I was like, what are you like, buying me shoes? She was like, no, but I just saw these. I was like, oh, they're cute. She's like, yeah, but they're not your size. <laughs> we need to find you some cute shoes that are not heels. Like, Yeah. Yeah. Well, I wear a lot of Vans. I actually like wearing my Vans. I find Vans. Me too. And, and we have the Vans outlet, like right one city over in Vacaville. And so they always have great, great deals at Vans. I have a couple of vans. My kids love them too. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love vans. Vans are really comfortable. And um, in fact, those are pretty much the only shoes that I wear now. I have, I don't know. I have a whole closet full of shoes. Um, I, I think as a gay man, it's a requirement to have at least multiple pairs of the same shoe. Um, so I, I've definitely done that a few times. Um, but, oh, but now, now my partner, we get into matching shoes. So like I'll go to vans. And like I'll buy a pair, and then like I'll find him a size for him in the same pair. So yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of cute. We can't right. wear sneakers to shoot to work. So oh, we, okay. we can wear pretty much whatever we want. It's really kind of <laughs> amazing. Um, I wore I wore I almost wore a tracksuit the other day, <laughs> but it's I knew I knew it's I know as long as like it looks really tough and hot, like they they wouldn't. <laughs> I don't think they would say anything. Valerie, can you uh, chime in? If I wore a track suit that matched to work, um, like an Adidas track suit with some like really clean Adidas sneakers, what do you think? My wife and I have a couple of pairs of matching fans. Yeah, it's fun, isn't it? Like having matching shoes. It's like, oh, it's so cute. And we I like matching, matching pajamas. Yeah. We, we Ooh, did yeah, that matching too. pajamas. Yeah. I know I can do hot in pajamas though, like to actually like wear them to bed. I'm more of like a pajama in the morning type of person when I wake up and I'll throw on pajamas to make it appear like I've been sleeping in pajamas all night. I don't know. Um, but definitely keeps me warm when I go downstairs. It's okay, you can wear anything you want. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you. Thank you for um <laughs> permission. Yeah, thank you for the thank you for uh, doing that, Valerie. I I will definitely. And if Michelle ever says anything to me, I'm going to say, well, it was publicly posted on the the broadcast. And Valerie said I can wear whatever I want. <laughs> you have to talk to her. <laughs> no, yeah, we have a good time at work. Really good time at work. So, all right, bud, you wanna you wanna give this hoodie away, man? Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. Ivan, I got some I got some fun music. Oh, nice. Yes. <laughs> and the winner is Heather Connolly. Heather Connolly. Heather, congratulations. Congratulations that to is, that Heather. Is amazing. And oh my gosh, why can't Oh, 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 oh. Hold and I'm going to do I'm going to do what JR said and I'm oh, going to comment it in the comment so after the broadcast ends we can remember who won. That's right. And Heather, thank you. Congratulations, Heather. Yeah. That's really really cool. Um oh, I used to have people clapping, but um we'll we'll give you one bell, Heather. There you go. Oh, I don't have any of the fun sound effects. <laughs> I can clap. 
I can I can bust out the uh, the kazoo. Yes. The electric Thank you. kazoo. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. This has been so much fun, guys. This is yeah. this is amazing. We got it. We I think all three of us. Wasn't there supposed to be a fourth person on here? There was, yeah. JR was supposed to get on and he never JR. showed up. Hey, wasn't that wasn't there a JR in um that uh Dallas? Wasn't JR part of the cast in Dallas? I believe uh-huh. so. Yes. But, oh, there's yes. my wife. She can't enter to she can't enter for me to win a hoodie, but she can tell me not to play the kazoo. <laughs> Chrissy, you just earned um three more uh points and you also get a bell. Thank you. <laughs> I need some of those, man. Dude, you got to get the uh, the Roadcaster um, the soundboard here. It comes with all these little neat little sound effects. Yeah, I deleted all of them and put my own stuff in. Oh, we'll see. I there you go. It. That was that. Yeah, yeah. You get the buzzer, man. I'll have to load up some new ones. <laughs> yes, please, please. Hey, if you find some really good ones, let me know because I'm a little preoccupied. The baby, Chrissy, Chrissy. Mira. The baby's ready to go to bed. The baby is ready to go to bed. That is definitely <laughs> yes, and probably my wife too. Probably your wife too. What time is it over there? It's almost nine. Oh wow! So oh, Ashley, it's almost ten for you. Mm-hmm. I wow. got my COVID booster today, so like, um, oh. are you feeling I'm, it? I'm just sore and tired. So. Yeah. Are you going to call out tomorrow? No, I went to work today. Oh, oh you went from, to work today. I work from home today, tomorrow. Oh, so, oh, that's nothing. A little walk from the kitchen back to the bedroom. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. my laptop can go in the bed with me. That's what. Look, look Ashley. <laughs> Some of us actually drive to work. <laughs> I I do twice a week. I drive an hour. Each way. Yeah. Oh, that's good. So, you, where in Florida are you? Are you, in, you? Did you say Fort Lauderdale? Nope, I live in Daytona. Oh, Daytona. Okay, okay. That's that's a lovely area over there. Where exactly is that in Florida? The east, the northeast, like underneath Jacksonville. I work in Orlando. Okay. Oh, okay, in Orlando. Oh, okay. Cool. The only thing I know in Orlando is the Disneyland Resort. Is that correct? Well, there's a lot more there, but Universal, yeah. Sea World, but oh, yeah, okay. that's there too. Yeah, I want to go out there. They have good scuba diving in Florida. <laughs> the last time I went scuba diving in Florida, it was like typhoon weather, and we had I don't know the boat was like going up and oh, I can get on my camera going up and down like this, and it was raining like sideways at us, and <laughs> so when we weren't in the water, we all had our scuba gear on to protect ourselves and. We had our, our breathing tanks on because we couldn't breathe because of the rain and the wind. Well, a couple of weeks ago, they had the Phoenix on here, and they're talking about surfing. So, yeah. you know. Yeah, big time. Big time. Yeah. yeah. Another great another great way to build your sober community. Mm. Get mm-hmm. involved with the Phoenix and all their yes. Awesome activities. I heard. I heard that Jr. I'm going to say it because he's not here. He said. I think he said he was going to host a skydiving class or something. Skydiving, really? Yeah. He skydives. I don't think he's ever been before, but he's going to host the class. I think Wait. he has because on his Facebook it. there's a picture of oh, him like right. a year ago. Wait. Wait. Oh yeah. How many right. times? How many times has Jr. been skydiving? I think one. Maybe. One. <laughs> one time, and now he's hosting a class. Yeah. So okay. So here's here's the deal, guys. If you want to learn how to skydive, Jr. The other host who is not here right now, um, who for me is a mythical person, um, but um, I guess the other two actually have seen him. Um, if you would like to learn how to skydive, please ask Jr. He, apparently, he is now an expert. And um, he's going to be hosting a skydiving class. Um, and what that entails is, um, um, but but it could be very fun. Make sure you I have think, life insurance. I think we should do it for International Overdose Awareness Day. Jump out of some planes with some purple parachutes. Okay. Nice. You do that and tell me how it goes. <laughs> I'm okay. Down. I'm down. Uh, no, I'm not jumping out of a perfectly good airplane. They tried to get me to do that in the Marine Corps, and I was like, you guys are freaking crazy. <laughs> I've done it once. 
No, uh-uh. that's not bad. Oh, you've done it before? Dude? I have, yeah. Well, no. with 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 someone attached to my bag. Oh, tandem. Cause, yeah, because uh, I mean, I feel like skydiving is not something that you want to to learn or do by yourself the first time. No, I don't. I don't want to have an error when I'm an error skydiving. <laughs> Yeah. I don't, I don't error is not dude good. i don't think anybody wants to have an error <laughs> when they're skydiving that's like going to the dentist and like hearing him be like oh whoops <laughs> but i i one of my childhood best friends is a skydiving instructor and he actually he had an accident it was a couple of years ago now but um he i guess there was some kind of crazy wind as he came down and he hit a parked car in the parking lot of the skydiving place and yeah exactly let, let, brett let, let me just jump in here zoe it was really good having you here i don't know if you're still on but um thank you for coming um and um bruce thank you brother thank you for being my grounding partner um bruce is also under the um same idea that our feet belong on the ground and not out <laughs> of a perfectly good airplane and definitely not into a mall parking lot with parked cars. Yeah. Um, the, the parked car thing is. That's kind of funny. <laughs> like, like terrifying. what are the chance? What are the chances that you're going to hit like the one parked car in the middle of a parking lot? <laughs> I mean, really? Come on now. I don't know. That's 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 terrifying. <laughs> How do you get into a car accident when you're? Jumping from a plane. <laughs> I, I wonder if I wonder if he had to carry his insurance card. <laughs> was it a hit? Or, was it a hit and like, run? Hit and run. Yeah, because he fled the scene because he didn't release his chute properly, and so he got drug on the ground. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's hilarious! No, I wonder if you really if you caused damage to somebody's car skydiving, would you have to carry auto insurance for that? that i don't know i like, can message him I and find out ask him ask him if he had to present <laughs> his geico card um <laughs> did they breathalyze him because well, like who hates a parked car they had, to call, they had to call the state troopers to do a breathalyzation test so we're walk the line to, yeah we're gonna need you to put your arms out beside you and you're gonna have to touch your nose while balancing on one foot an act of God. Yes, Bruce, an act of God would definitely have to be a reason for me to jump out of an airplane. With a bear. <laughs> I'm going to put it on your bucket list. <laughs> on my bucket list? Screw you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not jumping out God, of an airplane. Maybe. Okay, yeah. look. Okay, I'll tell you what. I'll do this. I will, I will go into one of those tubular things and I'll, you know, do the whole, like, Mission Impossible, you know, whew, Oh, you're talking about like the wind tunnel? Yeah, I'll do that. Diving, like indoor yeah. skydiving, I think is like what's skydiving, called. right? Do you get parachutes in there? Because I don't think so. I think you have the suit on that has like the oh like the flap, like the base I jumping wonder, suits. I wonder what would happen if you opened a parachute in one of those. I don't know. You'd go to the. You'd get stuck on the top. <laughs> you get stuck on the top, then you have to release your parachute. So what we're going to practice today, guys, is we're going to practice the emergency release of your parachute. Should your parachute get <laughs> tangled, what you're going to do is you're going to go in this tubular device. We're going to turn on the air. You're going to start to float. Open your chute. Get sucked up to the top. Release your chute, and then perform the magical floating technique again. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you. Yeah. Sign me up. <laughs> I went zip lining in Las Vegas. I would do that. Wait, was it off like a tall building or something? It was down like the strip. Oh, oh yeah, I've seen I've that. Seen that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to do that. That sounds fun. Valerie, we should go zip lining in Vegas. Valerie, are you there? Okay, she's probably working. Or it might take her a second to type. Oh, yeah, that's true. She can't talk back. Or she's she mad that she didn't talk want a hoodie. It. Yeah, she was like mad and she's like, screw these guys. Let me get my hoodie. Oh, wasn't tough enough. <laughs> wasn't tough enough. I've, <laughs> yeah, never, was, I've never heard that. Yeah, she's like, term. She's, she's like, oh my oh, God, these are so <laughs> it will never, it will never happen. Valerie. Valerie. She was ordering a hoodie online. She was that's ordering what? Uh, that's what the delay was. Valerie, were you ordering the hoodie online? Is that what the delay was? 
Well, I guess I could turn this ticker off since we did the giveaway. Oh, yeah. Sometimes I get distracted and forget. It's hard to talk and produce. Yeah, it's okay, man. I think you're doing a great job, actually, keeping our our cameras kind of going in and out. And <laughs> no. Trying to. Um, yeah, a lot of fun. Valerie, are you at work right now? Because I thought you were going to work today. That's what you told me before I left. And you I don't have to write yourself out, Valerie. Valerie, don't answer. We work, we work a program of honesty. And I know where your work desk is. It's okay. We'll wait. <laughs> don't ask questions. You I'm don't want to know the work. answer. Truly lovely chatting. Okay, Valerie. Yes. Oh, it is. It's seven o'clock. I think she actually does start her shift. So Valerie, have a great day at work. Uh, thank you for all the work that you do over at the Amazon warehouse. And we appreciate you getting one of the packages out. Um, and uh, I really look forward to seeing you tomorrow. I'm sure I'm going to hear about it. I'm going to get you tomorrow. I'm sure you will. Um, thank you for the heads up. <laughs> I'm going to wear my tough boots tomorrow. <laughs> She's going to bring some tape for your shirt. <laughs> Just some, some tape for my shirt and some tape for my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Cool. Wow. We hit almost two hours, guys. I know. It's impressive. That's crazy. Yeah. That's really Time good. Flies. Yeah, it does. So, well, um, yeah, plug, plug your podcast again in case. Yeah. Okay. Guys. So, didn't hear it at the so beginning. It, absolutely. So guys, again, uh, thank you very much for joining us today. Um, Brett, are we signing off in a few minutes here? Is that what we're doing? Is yeah. Yeah. Minutes? Let's, oh, let's okay. wrap it up. All right. Okay, cool. So, um, again, guys, my name has been Carl. Well, my name has been Carl. It's not changing. Still my up. name is Carl. Um, oh my gosh, this is so late today. Um, <laughs> Brett, what am I doing again? <laughs> just just um, tell everybody that's watching about your podcast and stuff. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Um, guys, I really appreciate you guys tuning in today. This has actually been probably the funnest I've had doing a podcast. Brett, I really want to get back on the show again. I want to be a regular. Um, yeah, fill in host? Let's, question mark? Yeah, fill in, yeah, absolutely, man. It, you don't have to put the question mark over my silhouette of my face next time. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm a person too. Um, but if you guys would like any information about my podcast, you can visit the drunken worm podcast.com is my website. I also have a swag shop there. So if you do want to get some of that recovery swag happening, unfortunately, this bottle rock t shirt you had to be at the event. Um, that is not part of the recovery swag. I, you know, I should have worn some of my swag. I don't know why I didn't do that. Um, but if you guys right, would you like any information, oh yeah, oh wow, and overdose. Why wow. everybody else has swag? Um, where's my, where's my swag? Oh, I don't have any. Oh, these are all my other. Things. I don't know what side the logo. Oh, here, this one here. So if you guys, if you guys would like your own drunken worm podcasts swag. there you go <laughs> swag. um this is the white hoodie it has sublimation printing on it so it has a really cool design down the sl down the sleeve here and if i don't cover up my microphone maybe i can do it like this and on the back side it says you do not have to live like that anymore or you ain't got to live like that anymore um and it's it's really cool so I will tell you that my shop is switching over to um, a new uh, person who's going to be doing all of my work for me. So I will no longer be on Shopify. Um, my friend Simon Apex and his lovely wife, the Queen Bee, um, they own a printing shop in the Sacramento area. And they have agreed to do all of my products, drop ship them for me. And uh, they have an amazing setup there. If you want to check out their website, it's ssurecordings.com, and um, they also have a, a digital uh, music recording uh, studio there, and they produce digital dance music for raves and stuff. Um, so, yeah, so, but if you guys would like to visit, you can also find me on Facebook at the Drunken Worm Podcast. Um, I am on Twitter. If you guys would like to do that, TWD underscore podcast. Also, Instagram at TWD underscore podcast. 
And um, I really appreciate you guys um, being here today. Yeah, thank and, you. Yeah, absolutely. And um, or they can scan see. the they can scan the QR code in the bottom corner, and it'll take yeah. you to all of your different social media profiles. Yeah, exactly. And Brett, <laughs> you know what time it is, brother. We got one last thing we're going to be doing with you guys here. And if I can get this pulled up in time, hold on one second. Oh, there is my bottom score bar. We're going to do a little rapid fire questions for you. Oh, um, for, for me and Ashley. Yes. For oh. you and Ashley. Okay. So uh, I might have to loop this song again. So just keep on talking, pretending that this is all part of the show. I'm going to give us all um, the same size screens. So yeah. Rapid the same. Fire. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Um, let's see. It's I want some recovery joggers or like sweatpants. Oh, some recovery joggers or sweatpants. That would be really that would be really cool. Well, if you work at the House of Axe where I work, you can get all of your fashion needs fulfilled. Oh. That's right. That's right. All of your fashion needs. So all right. Okay, guys, are you ready? So we're gonna we're gonna switch off. So Brett, we're gonna start with you. Oh. And these are rapid fire questions. So you can't think about it, you just have to answer. Who I'm is ready. your hero? Who's my hero? Yes. Oh man, that's I I have no idea. You're taking too long, brother. Let's see. I know, I know. Three. I don't know who my hero is. Superman, you, you're Superman. my hero. I'm your hero. Carl well, Fessenden is my hero. I like that. I'll give yourself a ding. Thank you very much, sir. Okay, Ashley. What is your go-to pastime? Um, does sleeping count? Yes, it does. <laughs> that definitely counts. Nice. All righty. Okay. Brett, describe your style in one word. Describe one word? One word. Come on. Trash? Trash. <laughs> okay, we, can, <laughs> we can definitely do that. We'll do that one too, Dings. Thank you very much, sir. Okay, Ashley, what is your go-to lazy dinner? Chinese. Chinese. I definitely like that one. We'll give you a ding for that one. All right, Brett. What is it? <laughs> what is the last craft you made? And your screen behind you does not count. Craft? Uh, craft. We, we, no, craft. No, well, no, my wife did that. I didn't help with that one. Um, oh my gosh, hurry, hurry, hurry. Man, I don't, Christmas I don't card. really do craft. Huh? Oh. Your Christmas you? card? Oh, yeah, Christmas card. Sure. Christmas okay, card. I like that. There we go. That's very good. All right. All right, there we go. Okay, I love Christmas cards. Ashley, what is your hidden talent? Oh, I can read people's minds. Really? Ooh. Sometimes, Ooh. but more their behaviors. Ah, you are the behavior whisperer. I like that. I don't, I don't know if I whisper, I just can. You can just figure it out. All right, I like that. Okay, Brett, what is your favorite board game? Favorite board game? Oh, that's yes. a good one. Uh, have you ever? What? It's a card game, not a board game. Have you ever played okay, Exploding fine. Kittens? No, Exploding Kittens. I have not. It's a good one. Well, then we're gonna have to play some Exploding Kittens sometimes. They also have a um, mobile app we can play over the phone. There we go. I'll, we'll we'll get offline and talk about that. All right, Ashley, you are going to be the last one here. Um, what or who is your favorite Disney character? Um, Dumbo. Dumbo. I like that. All right. Well, guys, this has been a complete treat. Um, it Ashley, it's been very lovely getting to know you. Um, you I, I, I really like uh, doing this. So, um, I hope that we can get back on here and do this again, man. Absolutely. Yeah, we don't even need Jr. or CJ or whatever his name is. <laughs> Just kidding, Jr. Just kidding. I know this is your stream. Um, only kidding, only kidding. You're Brett's hero, Jr. You're yeah. his hero. He just forgot. Um, yeah, that's right. Jr. is my Brett's... hero. How... Ah, yeah. I got tongue tied. Brett, Brett, it's okay. You're all my heroes. <laughs> that's right. All right, guys. Well, um, Bruce, Valerie, um, Chrissy, um, Zoe. And uh, everybody else, Ashley, uh, let's see, who else do we have on here? Heather, um, we had Melissa and Roberto uh, and Raymond 
and everybody else who joined us tonight. Thank you very much for listening in. We hope that you guys enjoyed this episode. And Brett, are they going to have access to this um, after the um, broadcast? Is it posted anywhere? They are. They yeah, yeah. It? That's that's in part of my closing little. Uh, oh, okay. Well, here um, yeah, yeah. this isn't my You're show. Good. Good. I'll let I'll let you close out. Okay, I can do that. <laughs> well thank you guys for tuning in to another episode of recovery revolution live the video will be available on the facebook page after the after the live stream ends it usually takes a couple of minutes for it to process but you can re-watch the entire video if you'd like to or if you would like the audio version of tonight's broadcast that'll be available about an hour or so after this ends and if you're looking for that, search for Recovery Revolution Live in your favorite podcast player. I also have another podcast called Recovery Survey. A new episode comes out every Wednesday morning. So if you would like to do a little bite-sized piece of recovery, about 30 minutes or so, that'll be on Wednesday morning. This week is going to be on food addiction and eating disorders. So if that's something that you would like to learn more about or that's something that you think you could benefit from, be sure to tune into that. Um, Yes. And yeah. And until next time, remember progress, not perfection. Boom. That's my closing line. Awesome. <laughs> are we, are we still alive? I am in the process of stopping it right now.